Hello, goodbye. The album's over now. Well, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad Taste of Music, and welcome to Best Album Closers. I asked you guys, what is, uh, fuck? Anyways, Best Album Closers, you know what I'm saying? Simple as this, what's a song that you feel like perfectly concludes a project? Which song leaves you with the strongest, lasting impression to close off your listening experience? Is it so good that it can make a mediocre album feel better afterwards? Uh, here are you guys' responses. Let's go! New York, I love you. But you're bringing me down. New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down from Sounds of Silver by LCD Sound System. From an absolutely witty, dancey, techno-pop trip of an album, there is nothing that could have closed it off better than the this explosion of all the melancholic and bittersweet emotions of the album blended into one. It is such a perfect song from the build-ups and lyrics to the imperfections of true emotion from his voice. This is the best closing track I've ever heard. Perfect. So, I've heard Sounds of Silver before. Uh, I don't actually really remember the closing song on this album, though I do remember that this is an album with just a handful of absolutely stellar near 10 out of 10 tracks. So I'm curious how the closer will actually finish this whole thing off. New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. Boring piano ballad. Okay, next! Wait a minute, this is more boring than the last one. New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. Brad Taste, I love you, but you're bringing me down. Like a rat in a cage. New York, you're perfect, oh please don't change a thing. And so I'll note the sound of this song, uh, being a piano ballad, is first of all something that's probably going to be very common with most album closers of albums, because for some reason that's the standard, uh, going to a piano ballad, but that being said, it still sounds very conclusive and it sounds appropriate, and I gotta say here, yeah, it works. Like a death in the hall, that you suck in my balls! Cut that out, alright, cut that out from the video, that never happened. In the neighborhood bars, I'd once dreamt I would dream. And I remember you was conflicted, misusing your influence. Some motherfucking amazing song. I mean, that shit is absolutely stellar. James Murphy, that's the guy in the band, right? His singing complements the instrumental so nicely, and it feels like the instrumental is just a palette for his emotions to just ascend, and there's something very human about this track. And the whole thing is like, New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down, but at the end, he's still saying like, maybe it's still worth it. He says, you're still the one pool where I'd happily drown, saying despite all these negative things, he still loves the place, and he still wants to die there, and it's such a gorgeous track. This song is such a stellar closer, dude. You don't even have to hear the rest of this album. Uh, but you should, for sure, except for the song Sounds of Silver, which I think is kind of mid. As basic as it sounds, uh, it's always been Are We Still Friends from Igor for me. Such a beautiful track, and the instrumental is so good for me. From a musical standpoint, the last note complements the beginning synth of Igor's theme. This makes the album loop uh, around and really amplifies the meaning of the album and this song. Igor is trying to hold on to what is left of his toxic lover, despite him claiming that he has to let go of the love on the previous track. It's such a beautiful piece, in my opinion, and has personally touched me more than any other song off that album. Now, I'm not huge on Igor, right? But I will admit that this is a pretty impressive moment that does conceptually bring the album together. Let's give it a shot. Pause. It's trash, dude. Igor ain't good. I'm sorry. Igor mid. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You, you guys are hearing what I'm hearing, right? I'm not alone on this. You hear what I'm hearing, right? I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Well, 
Augie Angle says, this sounds very similar to the LCD sound system you, you just listened to. I agree, except for it's worse. But yes, good, good point. Are we still friends? We be friends. This part's fantastic, if I do say so, though. And then apparently it goes into the intro. Yeah, it kind of does. And it does kind of work like that, doesn't it? Uh, it's a cute little trick. Look. I'm not super in love with everything about this track. I think the vocals are kind of weak throughout this whole album. Um, and I'm just I'm just not a big fan of them. And this doesn't really win me over to that, though. I do think the instrumental is really impressive, and I think it has some amazing moments. Uh, and if you think that this is one of the best album closers, I wouldn't I, like I just wouldn't hold it, hold that against you because I do think that thematically it works for the album, and I like how you described it. Though again. Igor kind of, I know I keep saying it, you know what I'm saying, but I'm just going to say it one more time, you know what I'm saying, Igor kind of made it, I, 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 let's, let's just close, okay, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Pink Maggot from Deftones White Pony. The lyrics sound both climactic and despondent. It is about going to school and losing your individuality. Ending this album on this note provides the album with a whole new meaning to me as the rest of this album is about problems that typically affect teenagers such as drugs and romantic issues. The music complements this feeling with long droning notes that represent immense loneliness. I'm curious how this is going to sound. I like your explanation here of the other songs. I think that's going to help uh, with my experience with listening to this. So let's give it a shot. Let's see how it is. Alright, I'm curious where this is gonna go from here. Pretty good. The sound of the song is amazing and the whole thing does feel pretty conclusive. Uh, like I can imagine this being a pretty solid wrap up to the entire project. Like this is really brutal. I love the heart, like the crazy thumping here at the end. Uh, yeah, this song is seven and a half minutes and it feels wonderful and like it doesn't really waste any time throughout the entirety of it. Um, I love this track. I think this has kind of gotten me really interested into this project. I've actually heard the song Back to School, um, but funny enough, that being the album opener, I really could not expect to hear such a powerful track like the one I just heard. I think there's also an argument to be made uh, how listening to an album closer can also be more convincing to listen to an album um, rather than the opener, and I feel like this might actually be one of those cases because the way this ends feels so large, feels so intense, it feels so grand, it makes you wonder uh, what pieces of this puzzle am I missing out on if this track is so uh, amazing and fulfilling. So, yeah, absolutely incredible track. Great example. Hello! 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 Glory Box by Portishead. This song is a slow and heart-wrenching goodbye to a perfect album. The strings and guitar riff on the chorus are just absolutely beautiful. Which album is this off of? Ah, <laughs> Dummy, huh? Yeah, if you if you couldn't tell, I like Dummy. I think Dummy's a it's a pretty okay album. It's pretty okay. Um, anyways, Glory Box. All right, so this this whole album is about as top tier as you can get for the uh, genre of trip hop. If you haven't heard this thing, you're just missing out on good music. So, uh, Glory Box. I don't really remember this one all that much. So good. 
<laughs> shit. I feel like this is one of those songs that if you're not like jumping into it through the album experience, it takes a little bit of time for it to really build up and start like burning. You I feel like I'm going to go to money in 2006. I'll be back. Completely absorbed by this shit. Mother of God. Oh, and this little, oh, this faded out act outro. No, it it perfectly spends its time. It is so good. If this song did not convince you to listen to this album, check your pulse. Okay, you're clearly not breathing. You're clearly not alive. Okay, Glory Box. Stout, stunning track. I feel like it's not just about the little individual moments. Like if you put this thing, uh, and you start like micro analyzing it, I, I feel like you can just kind of. I, I personally would kind of rate this one lower in terms of like if just closer quality, but I still think it's a fantastic track. By Oasis, easily one of their best songs, taking a Brit uh, taking Britpop. A step forward in a psychedelic and lush atmosphere it closes the album in an emotional and transcendental way. It's apparently about reincarnation. Uh, in the second part, overlaid guitar solos create a colorful supernova of sound. Adding to the shoegazy touch to this colorful track, uh, then the instrumental fades away, and slowly there's some guitars to close off the album with melancholic flavor. It's motherfucking Oasis. The chat's pissed off. They're angry, okay? That's probably because they're speaking on behalf of me, as I've been known to kind of talk a lot of shit about Oasis, and I've heard Champagne Supernova. I haven't been super, super impressed with it. But I also didn't know it was an album closer, so maybe with that, uh, with that in mind, I'll appreciate it more. Everyone wants me to listen to this album, so if you still want me to listen to this shit, let me know. Yeah, my wonder wall. So it's on that album, okay. Oi, bruv. I don't know if it's my fault that my chat's extremely racist towards British people. You know what? I'll, I'll take the blame for it. I'll take the bullet for that one, okay? It's not something I'm very proud of. Don't mind games done quick playing in the background, okay? I'm too lazy to pause it. Um, there's also a lot of people in this chat. I love this one. I need to listen to more Oasis. Like, have you ever played Zoo Tycoon, right? That's what this shit feels like as a streamer, seeing, like, like for what I do as a job, seeing, I need to listen to more Oasis. That's like, that's like it was someone at the park giving feedback. I'm curious, uh, someone's asking, why do you guys hate Oasis? And why do I, so I personally don't hate Oasis. It's like Arctic Monkeys to me, you know? The music's acceptable, but because it's acceptable, it's like catapulted to uh, the mainstream and because it's catapulted to the mainstream it no longer is just acceptable it's uh, super spectacular which I feel like is just kind of a little unfair because they are bullshit see now that's not really a uh, an explanation I am British and I hate Oasis I'm British and I've heard a lot and they're just boring they're just like a crappier Ben's era Radiohead I think the only reason people like Oasis is because the, the singer's voice is grating, and then people also hate it for that reason too. And I'm also not crazy about the songwriting either here, though I do think that this is kind of just filling that exact role of we're gonna die someday and, and will you think about me. God, this sounds so shitty, dude. Is it just me or does the actual song just sound like shit? Like it sounds like compressed pop crap. These are high-class speakers playing directly through Spotify, man. Yeah, it's like they just layered everything on top of itself and then just added reverb, then compressed it into a sandwich, and <laughs> there you got a song. Um, yeah, this section sounds like <laughs> dog shit. I mean, this this does not elevate the track at all. It actually just is. It, it, it just sounds like it's mixed for the radio. A mudslide supernova. Why, why? 
Stockholm Syndrome's kicking in. Hey, Brad, can we skip the rest of the song? You're weak. You know, I, I listened to seven hours straight of Demon Dice, and you can't even sit through this fucking Oasis song? One Oasis song? You're weak. All right, you, you got no cojones. Yeah, I feel like this song is objectively enjoyable. That's right, I said it. Objectively enjoyable. I think that this track does the, the thing. You know, it does the, the scripted outro thing where it's, you know, large and grand and all, it has all the correct pieces here and there. But it also feels weirdly manufactured and a little inhuman. That being said, I don't hate the song. I think that this, for, for what it is, is an okay album closer. For me, it's a bit dull. I would not want to sit through this track uh, for seven and a half minutes again, um, but I think that it has its moments where it's pretty solid. That being said, eh, next! The End by The Doors, just a fantastic, poetic, haunting, almost 12-minute masterpiece that basically concludes the entire sound of the groundbreaking first Doors record. One of the best psychedelic albums of all time, and it's basically the closest thing we have to the Vietnam War theme song. Huh. Okay, so I've not listened to a lot of The Doors, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm usually a lot more hesitant to sit through a 12-minute song, but, but, it's The Doors, and I kind of want to listen to it, so let's do it. Now, of course, I've heard a, a couple of songs off this album, specifically Light My Fire, which, oh my god, let me put a heart next to that song. That song is, ooh, it is so psychedelic. Oh my god, anyone who doesn't know. No, dude, you just get lost in this song. Like, you just disappear. Your body goes off to who knows where. All right, anyways. I mean, I guess it's appropriate to end an album with a song called The End. Also, every song besides Light My Fire is like three minutes, and this song's 11 minutes, you know? Well, unfortunately, as you can see from this chat, they're panicking because the, the stream got claimed. Unfortunately, that means I might have to film the rest of this offline. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music, and today we are actually, you know what, I already filmed an, uh, an intro, what the fuck am I doing? We're continuing on with this video, I started recording this about a month ago, alright, and I've been in a bit of a slump, but we're back, alright? I, I look very white, but don't be afraid, okay? I, I'm not like those other... All apologies, In Utero by Nirvana, I think uh, the what do you want from me message behind it really fits the album as a whole as well as Cobain's mental state at the time. The way that all the instruments slowly fade out in the end, leaving uh, just the vocals is really powerful to me. Absolutely incredible album uh, and that song to me is the perfect closer. I love this song so much, I think that this is like probably my favorite song on the album. Um, I feel like it closes it up really nicely, it has an amazing uh, moment where the instrumental just kind of swells and flourishes, and yeah, the outro also is fantastic, so uh, very happy to share this one. Everyone is gay. Yo, you know what? Kurt Cobain was the first one to say, um, racism is gay if you're offended, that's retarded before Tom McDonald. That's what this song is. Racism is gay if you're offended, that's retarded. It's truly breaking the social boundary, social barrier, and, and really putting a, a middle finger to the snowflakes. It's true. It's true. See, this whole album feels very dreary, but All Apologies feels almost like hopeless, like it's given up in, in a way, especially with this little like, boom, 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 and him just like, what else can I say? Everyone is gay. Nothing really matters anymore, which is also really crushing with knowing how fucking real the emotions on this project really were. my favorite part here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
You know, I think the biggest piece of irony is like this song is just so impactful, so powerful, and yet it's on like the, it's on the same alternative radio station that plays AJR and Imagine Dragons. Um, it, it it'll occasionally play uh, like this song, and and I swear I I don't even know how to feel about it. Regardless, yeah, I think this is an amazing album closer. Uh, I I love this album pretty much all the way through, but I feel like All Apologies is really the uh, the nail in the coffin. A, a really strong statement to end it off on, and uh, yeah. A Day in the Life, Sgt. Pepper, The Beatles. The instrumental buildup is like no other, and John's vocals fit perfectly. 10 out of 10, one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah, but it's The Beatles. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's like, oh, Sgt. Pepper was the number one album of all time on Rolling Stone, okay? Rolling Stone. You remember when, when they used to say Rolling Stone is like a, a symbol of legitimacy, okay? All right. <laughs> I was screaming in the hotel room, question mark? It, you see, you guys just don't get it, okay? It's, it's good, and let me explain why it's good. One, it's good because it's experimental, okay? Two, okay, it's good because it's the Beatles. Three, it's good because I don't actually know how to explain why it's good, it's just pretty good. And especially for the 60s, it's really solid. It's a, it's a nice solid tune, um, and I understand this one. Going back to this refrain of, I'd love to turn you on, which just is an interesting place to kind of end up at. Uh, especially with talking about a guy blowing his mind out in a car and all these other uh, tragedies. It's almost as if there's something um, pretty much repressing all of that. Uh, but yeah, I, I gotta say, I actually think this song's pretty good. It's an interesting track. I, I haven't heard the entire album, um, but it seems like a very trippy and strange way to close it off. I'm going to give it a red headphones. Dog All right. The fuck is this? Monochrome Pensive by The Contortionist off their album Clairvoyant. A beautiful heartfelt nine minute conclusion to their album, or rather a two album run, uh, including their previous record. Jesus Christ, this sounds complicated. The frontman uh, Michael Lesser wrote about a friend who had succumbed to a drug addiction after the passing of his mother a few years prior, as opposed to the early parts of the album, which have a bit more of a metaphorical approach to the lyrics uh, that become more grounded as the album goes on. This track is where all the metaphors are stripped away and everything becomes clear. The track builds slow, letting guitar shine and occasionally adding layers of synths throughout. The lyrics are melancholic and uh, retrospective, and the fantastic drum work carries it all along smoothly. The climax is massive and otherworldly, and it damn near makes me cry every time I hear it. An absolute prog rock masterpiece, and it's perfect uh, to end an album like this. Yeah, really good start. I really like the atmosphere so far. It, it does remind me of Radiohead, but I don't feel like it's something that could just be chalked up to, oh, they're, they're doing this, because it feels like there's still something uh, very emotional being attached to this, so. I bet you couldn't breathe when your lungs collapsed. Bruh. Bruh. I'm sorry, but, huh? Mama. With the tunnel vision that you had, cause you're dead. I mean, I guess you you weren't kidding that like the the metaphors are really stripped back, and maybe if the entire thing is teasing towards an event that you don't know what's happening, um, to have it end off on the the big reveal that they're dead, might be something. But it's just really odd having this song in a vacuum with no context. Oh, you hate 2000s rock? This is 2017 this came out. I'm sorry, is this supposed to be like confrontational or something? Maybe I shouldn't have had another high. Maybe I'm just desperate to think you'd be fine after you lost your mother. I guess that I thought you'd be all right. Are you all right? Question mark.
I'm I'm just really confused on the tone here of this song. In terms of nine minute rock operas, Jesus of Suburbia is still my top pick. Okay, okay here we go. Loser! You're a loser! Okay. All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, I do think that this uh, song, like you said, stripping back the bullshit and basically telling you things exactly how it is, could work. I think that this is one of the instances where I think it works against it. And and not in every single instance. I don't think this song is disposable by any means. I think it has some really nice moments, especially that outro where I think the uh, combination with electronics was tasteful, memorable. Int Besides, you guys were talking shit about this album. Fantano gave it a nine. That's right, Fantano gave it a 9. Did I did I fact check that? Do I actually know that? No. But but he did. Okay? And you guys are wrong. This record is essentially a a big progressive metal turnoff. <laughs> see, I told you I was never a big fan of these guys, you know? And this is why see I understood in the beginning. All right? I told you it was a bad song. My example that I'm going to submit here uh, is, of course, By Storm by Injury Reserve off their newest uh, project, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Now this song is wonderful, it has a Brian Eno sample, I believe. The song starts off and it's just a long extended uh, instrumental and it barely feels like it would be on an album that would be considered a rap album. Um, but this entire album I feel like uh, in a way blurs genres like I've never heard before and is one of the most fascinating listens. Uh, if you haven't heard this before, it's it's really an experience, and I would highly recommend checking this out. Rock can take the moment. It rains in post, but damn, man, it's really pouring. It's and the flow is kind of, I don't know, the mix is a little, and the mix is a little bit off. Look, this entire album came from, like, one of the members dying. Having a song where they're just reflecting and saying, damn, man, it's really pouring. It rains in post, but... Like, like how shit's really down right now and having something, it, it feels like a realistic reflection on something rather than a sob story, rather than uh, a pity party. Like just like a realization of holy shit. It, it, and it just feels like it captures that moment in the song and it really nicely pads it out with a sample that just almost feels like a, a moment of silence through this fuzz. I think the mix works extremely well for what they're going here. I think it matches very well with what the rest of the song is. Um, personally, I think this song's about like a, a solid nine, nine plus. But you know what? You know, I'm just the music expert here, okay? You guys just don't get it. It's been a long day without you, my friend. This album took me three listens to actually get an opinion on. And I'm someone who like, can, can pretty much decide how they feel, relatively speaking, with like the first listen. But this album, I had no clue where the fuck I was. Because this shit's so strange. Let me let me play um, the single. The one single I heard, Knees, I didn't like it for like the first seven listens. And now it's one of my favorites of the album. Anyways, uh, listen to the album on your own time. It's amazing. For a second, I thought this was Train, but it's Train in Vain by The Clash. Uh, it's just the best end track for an album that explores so many concepts, just a track that's so fitting and enjoyable, and is what I believe to be masterfully written tune. Now, I'm not super familiar with The Clash. I think it's old people music, okay, but not actually. The, the generation that was spewing out and saying, fuck the old people, right? Like, those people are now old, all right? And if you're holding on to The Clash, you're the, you're the new old generation. You know, he's kind of missing out the, the part of the story why she left. I, I wonder if that's going to be a part of this. Yeah. 
it's funky. It, it, it's a good song, and I can imagine it's sort of a, a nice groovy note to end off on. I have no idea what this album's about, but I think the song's really so. Grand Finale, Faces, Mac Miller. Mac Miller's always had some of the most fitting closers. Almost all of them seem to have a common theme. It's what you would call an ascension into heaven. In this case, Grand Finale is literally what it sounds like. This was basically supposed to be his last song and a goodbye to the people around him and his fans. The fireworks at the end are the cherry on top. What's also impressive is how self-aware he was just at the age of 22. It's an hour and 30 minute long album? Oh damn, it's got some good features on it. Yeah, the song's really crushing. It, it's really sad to know that the, this is what he believed would be like his final moments. And he's kind of putting that into a song. It definitely hurts a lot more with the events that happen. I think this is an amazing closer. I think this is a really good way of saying, all right, you guys, I'm, I'm dropping the mic. Here we go with the fireworks. It's trying to end off on a positive note. Just talking about his drug addiction and just believing that he doesn't have much time left it's it's tough but i i mean the song's amazing it's a beautiful piece of art it's good to know that you know he he continued for at least a handful more years a really great example I know that I can make you stay. I always thought Famous Last Words by MCR was a great closer. Thematically, it doesn't have much to do with the album. Yeah, see there there you go. Especially for an album that's this thematic for it to just uh, have an, uh, a kind of a burnout closer is garbage in my opinion. But it has a strangely uplifting mood. Oh yes, yeah, uh, emphasis on strangely. Uh, and the fade out percussion's fantastic as a final note. Kind of gives me vibes like I'm about... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the bonus track's terrible. My god, this album's got a lot of motherfucking streams. We love you, Brad. Please give us your social security number. Me, 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 me. Heart, bro. Of all albums to not have a genius follow, like, like there's a button to like follow along with the lyrics. You're not gonna have the Black Parade. It just makes no fucking sense with the rest of this album. Even this riff sounds off, like it's ripped from some sort of old ZZ Top song. Anyways, I've heard this song before. I personally don't think it's a very good closer. I completely disagree. And if we're talking about best closers, even you admit that there's some stuff here that isn't, uh, you know, that that isn't perfect about it. Like like the fact that it doesn't have much to do with the album, you know. And sure, you kind of write that off. But for me, because I feel like the album is so story driven, sure, it has a little bit of catchiness to make up for it. I don't I don't think it works as a good closer. I actually think that's the opposite. I would put that in the bad closers video. Uh. Anyways. What the fuck is this? Triple Dog Dare by Lucy Dacus. The song, I believe, is an absolute perfect way to close the album. It feels like a culmination of every musical idea, lyrical concept presented throughout a home video wrapped into one stellar eight-minute track. Plus, there's an additional bonus of Lucy's angelic voice. Don't know what the hell this is. Let's find out together. You know, it is tradition to end off an album with a slow piano song. So, I mean, I'm not surprised, but I, I'm not surprised. You know what I'm saying? Place at this time of night, you're dancing. Look on his face. Hey, I look away for one second. Hey, look, I might have just complained piano song, okay, but this song's actually very pretty. I think it sounds nice, all right? And and stop complaining just because it's slow, all right? If you run and hide, but you miss me, want you to hold and a now. Wow, good example. I mean, I can't speak on whether or not it's a good album closer, but it's an amazing song. Um, so I'll just say, sure. Swan's Apostate. Uh, this is 
the only album in the trilogy that ends with one of their longer songs. It starts off really creepy and keeps that up for its entirety. The payoff is around at the 13 minute mark, or the payoff at the 13 minute mark is great. And then the song ends with random drum mashing, which closes this year perfectly. Now this one, this one is, uh, it's it's a long one, okay? And it's even longer when, when you t uh, take into consideration that I actually believe the last two songs of this album work is the closer. Um, it is not a 15 minute song, I believe it's a 28 minute song or something. Yeah, 23 minutes. Yeah, so, sit back, relax, okay? This is, uh, this, this one lasts forever. song is going to require a lot of patience, okay? So if you're not willing to put it in, alright, now's the time to leave. Yo, what day is it? What's up? Yo, I, I'm gonna look back at the chat because there's so much fucking shit. I like I I haven't actually, uh, and then then love to talk about that. Yeah, drones are good. Crash symbol sounds like they hired a real crash symbol monkey to play it. Depressed mental ill cat is my gender. What? What the fuck is this chat? And then people are freaking out at this shit. It's so funny because like I I I'm listening to this and I'm experiencing it. But it's definitely a lot different when you just kind of like zone out everyone else. Ryan, what, who the fuck was Ryan? I saw some other people saying Ryan. Long is fine if it wasn't a dude hitting the bell with his dick for 10 minutes. You're all trying to act like sophisticated music fans. Just admit it's noise and move on. Someone has really brought bring you guys to reality. Are you serious? All right, let me try to explain the, the experience that I have with listening to this song. Because I, I feel like listening, again, just like blocking out everything else and listening, it's not an easy listen. It's very ugly. It's extremely ugly when you hear the, the screaming, the profanity. It's repelling, but it's fascinating. And you wonder why it's here. And it's all the rest of the pieces of this song that build up. Why is this here? And... and I think the most shocking has to be the very ending where it almost sounds like uh, one of two things. Either this creature that th this character is turning into getting gunned down and killed uh, and the drums representing gunshots or it being like uh, it, the inside their mind, like like constant swells of pain. And I feel like there's just something so damning about that. Uh, that, that personally feels like resonates and, and just strikes me really like getting stabbed in the stomach. Yeah, it's it, it's disturbing. I feel like the actual, like, vibe and, and execution, I don't know. I, I personally love it. I think it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite experiences I've ever had, period. Um, it's it's one of a kind. You, you've got to at least give it that. Uh, but, but yeah. <laughs> Can we listen to the song again from start? Ah! 
Ah, oh, God damn, man. That song's so good. I'm sorry. It's songs like that that, that get me excited about music again. Because what the fuck even is that? Why is it like that? The execution is so strange. The the large droning intro in, into the, the, the drums that just... There's so many phases and it all feels like it leads to something. And you just want to put the pieces together. It feels like it really rejuvenates you. I, I, I personally find this kind of music to be some of the most like stimulating and, and fascinating to try to pull apart i think it's a, a near perfect if not perfect album closer as it is just such a what the fuck moment and then of course on the vinyl version that's the second track of the album which i don't understand still i still don't understand why that is truce on vessel is just so perfect wraps up the night the album nicely and captures the feeling of the night is coming to an end 21 pilot is garbage okay this shit garbage all right you guys ready i'm not ready oi look at these numbers these numbers make the entire rest of the day seem like like these guys were just do you see that the lowest stream song on here is almost a hundred million streams hello goodbye the album's up is coming to I'm sorry, I'm bored as shit of this. And, and that's not to say that it's terrible. I, I think that it's like, I just think that ending an album with this piano bullshit, you know, I've never been a fan of that. Especially when it's just stripped back piano and sung vocals and it's got 100 million views. What can I say? I'm salty about the numbers. This is a song with 100 million views. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sister Ray from White Light, White Heat. I'm only picking this because someone was complaining that I skipped over it, apparently. To me, this is the quintessential Velvet Underground song. It perfectly encapsulates their original experimental sound and is the defining moment of the birth of noise rock. The song is the perfect swan song for the Velvet Underground's experimental era and has been one of my favorite album closers ever since I first heard it. <laughs> it's 17 minutes. Okay. I like the noise. I said I could you know, it's really interesting how this is such a twisted story, and yet the instrumental is so fucked up. It all just combines into feeling like an extremely uh, appropriate experience. Like, oh, uh, like like the fact that it's so like you know, don't shoot him, you'll stain the carpet, and then it's just going on in the background. I, I feel like it's so oddly appropriate. This is insane. I feel like if you have to ask if something is psychedelic rock, then it's not psychedelic rock. But that being said, this is psychedelic rock. Ending on amphetamine is also a really, uh, really nice way of just kind of, you know, closing it off. It That feels uh, oddly symbolic of the dopamine hit that this entire song is. That was, uh, that was pretty good. I'm familiar enough to, with uh, with Velvet Underground to know their, their sound and, and style. And I still don't understand how the fuck this, this shit comes together. I'm overloaded with stimulation from this track. The sound was amazing. God damn. This is how you make a song about drugs. I will say this is how you make a song about drugs. Uh, let me show you a song that's not a song about how, uh, how, how you're on drugs, okay? On drugs. I'm very happy that we were able to end this on two extremely long songs as doing videos like this I feel like you're not always able to give the time to the larger songs the the more grand tracks and I feel like having those in this video feels appropriate as not just to pretend they don't exist because it would take a long time to get through them um, as the the long songs that that go through phases that is, some of those can be like the most enriching and powerful experiences and and personally I think that those last two songs were like my favorites and the most 
I feel like clear and cut ways of closing an album with the most grand possible statement. Now, not every album closer has to be an incredible statement, but that's also what makes the ones that are so impactful and powerful. My name is Bradley.